Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. On May 23, 1903, Horatio Nelson Jackson and Sewell Crocker departed San Francisco to embark on America's first cross-country road trip to New York City. This was 19 days before the hero of our story was born. In this episode, I'm going to tell you a similar story about the most famous cross-country tour in NFL history. And it all started with Pop Warner. Welcome to the Football History Dude Podcast where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. Your host is Arnie Chapman. Football is his passion, and he wants you to come along with him to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board his DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. This time as we step off our DeLorean, the date is June 11th, 1903, and we are in Willow River, Minnesota. The hero of our story this time is Ernest Alonzo Nevers. Sometimes he was referred to as Big Dog. Now, at the time of the NFL when Red Grange, you know, was taking his barnstorming tour, there was another big name in the NFL, and it was Ernie Nevers. He was known back when he was in college to be the hardest working line buster on the western slope, and he was stated to be a playing weight of at 6 foot and 205 pounds. But we got to go back a little bit. You see, he played high school in Superior, Wisconsin before he moved to California. And in college, this was when he started to really make a name for himself. You see, he played under the famous Pop Warner at Stanford. And we've heard of Pop Warner before, you know, in other episodes like the Jim Thorpe episode and such. In fact, this is kind of interesting because Pop called him the football player without fault. And some say that Warner even said that he was the greatest player he ever coached. He compared him to uh, this previous player we just discussed, the great Jim Thorpe. I mean, that's got to be one of the biggest honors. When you have a legendary coach such as Pop Warner, I mean, they have Pop Warner football nowadays, and he coached Jim Thorpe, you know, the legend. And he says that you are at least comparable, if not even better than him. In fact, there was a, a quote from the Hall of Fame bio, and it said, like Thorpe. When it came to football, Nevers could do everything exceptionally well. Run, pass, kick, call signals, and play rock-hard defense. I mean, of course, we talk about all these players as being exceptional athletes. But he just had something different to him. You know, to be considered, at the time, it was Red Grange and Ernie Nevers. These two were the top dogs in the playing field. In fact, he was called Big Dog, like I said. Starting that was probably around the time of Stanford. He was an All-American, of course, and he famously led the Indians against Notre Dame in the 1925 Rose Bowl. Now, they would not win this game, but the thing that made it so miraculous was he played on two very sore ankles that were all taped up. He broke them earlier in the season, and he's out here playing against Notre Dame, you know, the vaunted Notre Dame defense. And in this game, he rushed for 114 yards. They lost 27-10, to but it was just this gut-wrenching performance, you know, of heroic proportions. And what this would lead to was he became the first Stanford player to have his number retired, and it was retired immediately after his graduation. He was the number one, I don't mean number one player, his jersey number was number one. And there are only two other players that have had their jersey numbers retired at Stanford, Jim Plunkett and John Elwood. Now, we're talking like 40 years between the time that Ernie Nevers and Jim Pluckett played. So it's like this huge deal that he had his number retired back then. But then after college, he uh, he went a different route. He actually signed up for pro basketball and baseball 
you know, had contracts for both of those uh, types of professions and initially. In fact, later on, as far as baseball goes, in the 1927 season, as a pitcher, you know, in the major leagues, he would give up two of the home runs to Babe Ruth in his legendary 60 home run season. And uh, overall, his stats weren't really the best, but there was a quote from Babe Ruth that went as such. He told him, you've got good speed, kid. For my sake, I hope you stick to football. And football is where he made his hay. The Duluth Eskimos lured Nevers away from a baseball career and gave him the highest salary up to that point. It was $15,000. Now, I saw $20,000, $25,000 in other places. But let's just go with 15000 because it's at the low ball end. Still the highest at the time. And he played for the Duluth Eskimos in 1926 and 1927. This kind of leads us into the beginning of the episode when I talked about that great first time where they had the cross-country tour. You know, the cross-country uh, road trip, if you will, where they took a vehicle from San Francisco all the way to New York City. And although that was wondrous and amazing, possibly even more amazing, was the 1926 Duluth Eskimos Barnstorming Tour, which was considered the most celebrated barnstorming tour in NFL history. Now, I thought that Red Grange had a crazy time, you know, uh, getting all over the place and going from LA, New York and such, but I'm telling you, this guy kind of outdid him. Before I tell you what the uh, crazy stats are, you know, the the types of things that he did, I guess maybe you should go ahead and sip back a pre-workout drink or a protein shake or something because you're going to get tired after this one. Okay, so this is what he did. He would play in a 29-game barnstorming tour, and they only had one home game. It was the first, then the rest was on the road. Ernie Nevers played 1,714 minutes out of a possible 1,740 minutes during that 29-game barnstorming tour. And there was a quote that came from Ernie Nevers that kind of explained what he thought about it, and it goes as such. I like the way I played it. You went the full 60 minutes. We went from September to January and from Maine to Texas to the Pacific Coast. In all, we played 29 games and we had only 16 men on the squad. If the coach took a man out of the game for a substitution, he got mad. That's how much we loved it. End quote. Now, like I said, he played for the Duluth Eskimos 1926 and 1927 season. And unfortunately, he had a rash of injuries that forced him to sit out the entire 1928 season. But then he was pulled out of retirement in 1929 by the Chicago Cardinals. And this would lead to a record that is kind of like that white unicorn, you know, you've heard of it, but you don't quite believe it. You don't know for sure if it's there. But let me tell you what, it is. It's sitting there in your dreams, haunting you, every fantasy football player out there. Because on Thanksgiving Day, November 28th of 1929, This dude scored all of the 40 points for his team. Now, this is the oldest record in the NFL. He had six rushing touchdowns and four extra points. Now, think about it. A day like that would single-handedly take down the Millie Maker on DraftKings. Which, by the way, you can get your chance at winning a million bucks on DraftKings yourself by heading over to thefootballhistorydude.com slash DraftKings. You'll also get a free entry into a tournament, again, that's the footballhistorydude.com slash DraftKings. Now, getting back to this legendary performance, there were two different times where this record was even challenged. The Browns' Doug Jones back in 1951 and the Bears' Gale Sayers back in 1965 tied for 36 points. This was still four points less than the record. So let's get to that game. Again, this is November 28, 1929. This is a game against the Chicago Bears. So it was kind of Uh, fitting, you know, Red Grange, the Chicago Bears, and the Chicago Cardinals, Thanksgiving Day. So this game starts off in the first quarter. Ernie Nevers would run for two touchdowns. Then he'd have another touchdown in the second quarter. So they go to halftime. Coming back from halftime, this is kind of interesting because it was Red Grange's brother, Garland Grange, who scored a 60-yard touchdown in the opening minutes of the third quarter. But he's all like, get in the back seat, baby Grange. This is my show. So he would proceed to score a fourth touchdown in the third quarter. Then he'd run in two more in the fourth quarter. And like I said, he had four other extra points. And this would give him a total of 40 points scored in that game. Now, like I said, fantasy football, gold. Not even to mention how many yards or catches or anything like that he'd have. But then the next week, he ended up scoring the only 19 points against the Dayton Triangles in a game that they won 19 to nothing. 
So he went 59 straight points where it was him, the only show in town. That was it. And on a side note, Nevers was also a player coach for one year in Duluth and two years in Chicago. So three out of his five years. He was all league, all five of his NFL seasons. That's right. I, he only played five NFL seasons. He also starred in two movies, The Lost Special and The Spirit of Stanford. I included a link in the show notes, so you can go ahead and check them out. And while you're there, you can click through my audiobooks.com link to get a free audiobook about the history of the NFL. That's over at thefootballhistorydude.com. Also, make sure you subscribe for free to the show by mashing that little subscribe button on your podcast player of choice. That way you get the freshest, hottest off the press episodes each and every week. So other than football, as a player that is, looks like he coached at Lafayette College in 1936, and he was also on the coaching staff of the University of Iowa in 1937. And in between, you know, various other kind of coaching positions, but those are kind of the two main ones. He also served in the Marines in World War II. And I don't know how much of this is true, but I saw somewhere where he was considered missing in action for some months in the South Pacific. And like I said, I couldn't confirm this, but it was on a few different places. So I don't know if this other one was true either, but there was a uh, couple of sites that claimed that he might have been the only person to ever play professional football, baseball, and basketball. After the war, he went into business and he had various types of positions in the business world. But everything, as far as his football career, will culminate in 1963. Yes, he would be inducted to the inaugural class of the Professional Football Hall of Fame. Then unfortunately, on May 3rd, 1976, at the age of 72, Ernie Nevers would pass away. But I'm just grateful that he was able to see his induction ceremony back in 1963, to the Professional Football Hall of Fame. And overall, Ernie Nevers was a phenomenal talent that, according to Pop Warner, rivaled the likes of the legend Jim Thorpe. His 40-point effort stands as the oldest NFL record of all time. This is one of the reasons why he was inducted to the Professional Football Hall of Fame. The thing that sets him apart from the rest of the members of the Professional Football Hall of Fame was the amount of seasons that he played. Ernie Nevers only played five seasons, and that was 54 games. This amount was easily the least amount of games played by a member of the Professional Football Hall of Fame. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Football History Dude and were able to gain some knowledge nuggets about one of the greatest line busters in the history of the NFL. Next week, we get to hear about the life and career of the last member of the inaugural Hall of Fame class, Sammy Ball. But for now, dudes, I'm through if you're through. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Football History Dude. To make sure you're the first to get the next episode, please subscribe on your podcast player of choice and head on over to thefootballhistorydude.com for the show notes and more information on the history of the NFL. And remember, dudes, where we're going, we don't need roads. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday's Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.